Dear siblings in Christ, in this time of the coronavirus and sheltering in place, we want to reach out to you to connect uh, through the online resources that we have. Uh, this is our, our first attempt, so it's not going to be perfect, but we'll uh, continue to improve, I hope, as the weeks go by. But I hope that uh, imperfect as it is, this um, presentation, this video, will be helpful for you and meaningful for your faith. I'd like to talk about the lesson, the gospel lesson for the fourth Sunday in Lent. Um, it's from the ninth chapter of John. I'm not going to read that in its entirety. It's a long lesson, but hope that you will pick up your Bible and read that for yourself. It's a familiar story, the story of the man born blind and Jesus healing him and the reaction that followed from the religious authorities. In our world, there are many kinds of blindness, but in this story, two in particular. The man who was born blind, he would, had never seen anything in his life. There was literally no light visually in his life. And the spiritual blindness of the religious leaders, the Pharisees, uh, blindness to God's work in the world when it, it doesn't fit in our narrow boxes and uh, perceptions. The story begins with Jesus and his disciples on their journey, and they come across this man who the narrative says was born blind. And immediately the disciples turn it into a theologizing. <clears throat> we go from the medical issue or the condition to theology. Jesus, who sinned here? Was it this man? Or was it his parents? I mean, how easy it is to kind of get into that abstract theologizing. To kind of say, well, who who's to blame here? I mean, we don't want to deal really with the mystery. Who is it? Let's get it in our box. Well, that's easy in our personal lives as well. If something happens to me, how easy it is to say, God, why me? Why do I deserve this, this tragedy, this illness, whatever? Why do we deserve the coronavirus? Why us? Why now? And it happens communally, of course. I remember an occasion in my first parish, a young man in our youth group had been arrested. It was a traffic violation, a rather serious one. His parents had bailed him out. And this being a small town, it was all over very quickly. The, the, the word was all over, the news about this. And after worship that Sunday, I recall a couple conversations as I was walking to my car. At one car, the conversation went something like this in the parking lot. <coughs> you know, this kid's parents, they're well intended, but they just don't have enough rules, enough boundaries. I mean, this poor kid, he needs, you know, a set routine, and if they would just get their act together and be more strict, this would have never happened. A few cars down, the conversation went like this. 
You know, his parents are well-intended. They're nice people. But they're so strict with him. I mean, all these rules and all these regulations and, you know, you have to be here and then and this and do that. And <clears throat> he just couldn't take it anymore. He just had to do something. Who sinned? This young man? His parents? Well, confronted with that question, Jesus doesn't even bother to answer it, to address it. What does he do? He takes a little dirt, a little spit, mixes it up, and puts it on the man's eyes and tells him to go to the pool of Shalom and he'll be healed. And this man, born blind, is healed. He can see for the first time in his life. There is physical light. Well, you'd think that would be the end of the story, right? <clears throat> Except maybe a party, a celebration. Isn't this great? But it doesn't work that way. Well, first off, Jesus did this on the Sabbath. And that shouldn't be done according to the Pharisees. So a long debate starts again. Another set, another series of parking lot theologizing. Who is this Jesus that he would heal someone on the Sabbath? He must not be from God, because anyone from God would not do that. <clears throat> and have you seen his credentials? <clears throat> you know, what seminary does he have a degree from? Or what medical school that he heals people? What degree does he have? I mean, I think that's the intent of John's Gospel. For us to ask, who is, who is this Jesus? And who is he to me? Well, the Pharisees aren't satisfied. First, they interview this young man who was born blind. <clears throat> who did this to you? Well, I think it was Jesus. I was kind of caught off guard, but... I believe it was Jesus. Well, they don't like that answer. So they go talk to his parents. <coughs> Is this your son? And was he really born blind? And they reply, well, um, um, I'm not sure. He looks like my kid, but you know what? He's of age. You talk to him. They know if they give the wrong answer, they'll be kicked out of church. So they say, well, you know, we're going to kick them out anyway. And dad says, well, you know, it kind of looked like my kid, but it must not be because my kid can't see. He's blind. They go back again to the man born blind. Who did this to you? Well, it was Jesus. Well, just leave me alone. And they throw him out. You're out of church. This was an unauthorized healing. You didn't have permission from us to be healed. So you're out. That's the irony. This man born blind who is now a visionary who sees both physically and spiritually is kicked out of the church. And the Pharisees, who should see the religious leaders because of their need to control. You know, this didn't happen with our permission. This didn't happen <coughs> within our narrow boxes. 
how things should be. Two kinds of blindness. Some of us are of the first kind, totally blind physically. And many of us, at least on occasion, are rather blind spiritually. It can happen to any of us. God doesn't always act in the ways we expect God to act. Now remember, this is John's gospel. In the beginning was the word, and Christ was the light of the world. Try to control light. Try to block it. And remember Nicodemus, the spirit blows where it will. And all he could say is, how can this be? It doesn't fit in to our categories. So as we shelter at home, May our eyes be opened in new ways, in this new situation we find ourselves, our whole world in. May it be a time when we renew our devotion and open our spiritual eyes to how God is working in our lives. May it be a time where we renew our prayer life, our devotional, biblical reading. May it be a time when we see all the more clearly the world's needs and figure out ways that we can safely, in this pandemic, serve those especially in need those who are losing their jobs, those who are on the front lines of health care and public safety. Jesus, heal us and open our eyes. Let's conclude with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.